Are you going to get me covered in hair again? Because I'm not interested, babe. Not interested if that's the deal. What's new, Pussycat? Welcome to my channel. My name's Emma Cownley. I'm a freelance copywriter and blogger, and today I'm going to be taking you through freelance self care rules you should never break. Which is incredibly ironic because I'm currently on day three of not seeing anyone and not leaving the house. So this should serve as a timely reminder to myself as well as to you. Doesn't matter whether you're new or old to freelancing. I think that some of these things would be helpful as a nice little reminder for those of us who have been tenured in the freelance life for a long time. And if you're brand new to the world of freelancing, then take it from me. These are all mistakes I've definitely made and some of which I'm currently making right now. So listen to my advice, don't make those mistakes. Before I start this video, a little bit of housekeeping as always. Please don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined. For example, if you've watched a couple of my videos by this point and you really think, this chick, she's all right. Well then fucking subscribe. I'd love to have you along for the journey. Every two weeks I put out videos about freelance life, copywriting and such. If there's anything that you want to see that I haven't made a video on yet, leave a comment. Let me know and maybe I'll give you a, a nice little treat. Also, you can leave me a donation on coffee if you would like to. I'll leave a link for that in the description box below, along with a link to my witching hour consultation, which a couple of you have taken up recently. And it's been really nice to see you and chat with you and give you one-on-one -on -one help with any problems you might be having. Also, I'm on TikTok now. So if you enjoy watching these YouTube videos and you feel like you'd like something similar to this, but shorter and more often, that's what that is. That's exactly what that is. By the time you're watching this, I probably will have had TikTok for about a month. And let me tell you, I'm having fun over there. I'm having, I'm having fun. So typical of my normal style, I'm going to start this numbered list with probably the most difficult and caveated point in the whole video. And that is to start your day with a proper morning routine. Now, hear me out. Morning routines don't work for everyone. If they don't work for you, don't do it. Ignore this point, that's completely fine. But I would recommend trying to get up at the same time every single day to kind of regulate your body clock and make yourself feel, you know, like you are preparing for the day. I would always recommend have, a, have breakfast, get dressed, have a shower, not in that order, that would be silly. You know, just do whatever for you makes you feel like you are looking after yourself and preparing for a day of work. Make no mistake about it, I'm not seeing anyone today. I'm not even gonna leave the house, but I'm wearing lipstick and a bra. I just think make sure you are setting a routine and that you are looking after yourself. Just because you're freelance and you're not gonna see anyone or go anywhere, doesn't mean you shouldn't look after your body or nourish your body or make sure that you are doing what you would like to do to get ready for the day in a way that you feel sets you up to do your work properly. Point number two, and it comes with a caveat, much like point number one, and that is, Please try not to work with anyone that makes you feel horrible about yourself. Now I understand that is an incredibly privileged thing to say. You have to have clients coming out the wazoo or a fully stocked pipeline in order to t be able to turn around and say to a client, I don't like the cut of your jib. This doesn't make me feel good. And respectfully, I'm gonna walk away and recommend someone else for this work because I'm not the guy for you. Yes, that takes, you've gotta be in quite a privileged position. If you're not in a position to remove yourself from negative client relationships, I will say, make sure that you are noting down and consciously registering, what is it about this relationship that is not making you feel good? Because A, could you address it with them? or address it internally through your own working processes or policies? Is it you beating yourself up based on what the client is saying or doing? And B, this is going to inform you later on down the line when you do have the privilege of deciding who you'd like to work with. Well, let's remember back to that client or those clients that did not make us feel good and why that was 
and not repeat that now that we're in a position to say no. As a freelance business owner, it is now your right and your responsibility to look after yourself. You are the number one business asset. You are also the boss and the employee and the HR, right? You don't have to put up with this shit. If there are clients that don't make you feel good, don't work with those people. Remember that you don't like them, don't work with them. It's your prerogative, it is your right. And that is why I would always encourage you to come into a discovery call or a chemistry call with your spidey senses on. Maybe give my spreadsheet a little try. I'll link it in the description box below so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got a screening spreadsheet that you can use. And really go into it asking all the difficult questions, really kind of being on high alert. How am I feeling? What are they saying? Are there any red flags? And if your gut tells you no, your gut is probably right. Point three, easier said than done. Don't take feedback to heart. It's hard because creativity is a reflection of the self. You put so much into a piece of creative work and a piece of writing. It's your heart on the page. And when somebody looks at it and tears it apart, it's hurtful. It makes you feel bad, dents your confidence. You know, it's hard not to hold that and carry it with you. That's not gonna do you any favors. It will not serve you to do that. Every time I find myself in this position, I say, the client is giving feedback on the work, not the person. They fucking shouldn't be giving feedback on the person. And if they are, rewatch that little section on uh, point two again and just remind yourself why we don't tolerate that. So feedback should never be personal. Feedback is about the work. And I always like to try and reframe it as a new challenge because the first draft is always the start of the conversation. Now I cannot remember who it was that said that. Maybe it was Eddie Schlener, maybe it was Glenn Fisher. I can't remember which one of those guys said that this, but it's something that I hold in my heart whenever I'm nervous about submitting a first draft. First draft shouldn't be perfect. The first draft is the start of a conversation. So when you get feedback, that's just your client continuing the conversation. And don't you want it to be perfect for them? Of course you do. So you're gonna take that and be like, right, new challenge. How do I make this more like what they want to do? And set your mind to the challenge and be excited by it, not kind of upset or scared by it. And usually that kind of helps me move past the feedback is an attack on me, I'll never work again. And basically you've torn my heart out and shat on it in front of my very eyes. Point four is that breaks are necessary. Breaks throughout the day that is. Take a lunch break, mate. Eat some food. Don't eat at your desk. Don't have a pot noodle while you carry on working. Even worse, don't just work through lunch. If you're notorious for getting lost in the process and forgetting to eat, set an alarm on your phone, set a reminder to make sure that you get up from your desk, walk around, leave the screen, have a little snack of something, and you know maybe breathe some fresh air, touch some grass, whatever the fuck, call your mum, I don't know, and um, then go back because being immersed in that deep work for so long is not very good for you. It stops your brain from having the rest it needs to work through creative problem solving. And it's also not good for you as a person. You need to intermittently step away from your computer and take a break. It's better for you. Your work will be better for it, I promise. You don't want any blood sugar issues, do you? Go and have a fucking sandwich. Go down Greg's and get a sausage roll. Treat yourself. Point five of freelance self-care is, if it ain't coming, don't force it. And that's a rule that you can pretty much apply to other areas of your life if you wanted to. Always bears remembering. If the creativity for this particular job is just not sparking for you in this moment, that's okay. That's what happens. This is creativity. You can't turn it on and off like that. Creativity happens under a specific set of circumstances it's a mood it's a feeling it's a spontaneous kind of a thing you have to kind of set the mood and allow it to happen organically are you done down here are you mate so if it's not happening for you in this moment in time that's okay no pressure because in an ideal world we will have built writer's block time into every turnaround that we're giving our clients in an ideal world. 
So I would suggest stop that task, go away, clean the bath, put a load of laundry on, walk around the block, do a fucking jigsaw puzzle, play with the dog for half an hour, I don't know. If you can't afford the time away from your desk, switch. Do your bookkeeping, make one of your own blog posts, do some marketing on social media, whatever the fuck, just leave the task and know that your creative brain is still working on this in the background and when you come back to the task, who knows? It would, like literally, the number of times I've sat there and slaved away over a piece of writing, dragging my sorry ass through it to get this thing done. And I've been like, I can't, I can't anymore. I'm going to bed, that's it, I'm done. I'm gonna walk away. I come back the next day, sit down, and within the first five minutes, the draft has written itself. It's infuriating. I will never learn, I'm telling you. Point number six, asking for help is okay. In fact, it's encouraged. If you're stuck in a tricky client situation or you can't quite figure out a strap line or something, go to your freelance community. If you're new to freelancing, find a freelance community. There's tons of them. You can find them on LinkedIn, Facebook groups, there's Slack and Discord groups. There's tons of freelance communities. And when I tell you that joining one will be the light of your life. I'm not exaggerating, and I know that's hard to believe because I am a superlative in a human skin sack, but I can safely and confidently say freelance communities are my lifeline. Any, any problem I have, I'll go to them, I'll be like, what, does this client situation seem dodgy to you? Because, you know, I'm getting a, little bit of a, getting a little bit of a feeling. And they're like, oh mate, run, run. And I'm like, knew it, knew it. Or something about this strap line isn't sitting right. And I think it's this word. What else could I be saying? Because I've trawled the thesaurus. My eyes are bleeding. I need an external opinion. And those guys show up for me. So join a freelance community, ask for help, always ask for help. Nobody's going to think any less of you because everybody needs help at some time or other. Point number seven, holidays are essential. You need time off. You need time off. If you're new to freelancing, you're probably going to want to leave it maybe like six months or so before taking time off. But if that's the case, weekends. You must, must, must. Much like my lunchtime point that I mentioned earlier in the video, holiday is equally as essential. I am someone who cannot do good work without regular consistent breaks. For some reason, I hit burnout so hard, my brain shuts down. And I think that's just because of the sheer amount of energy it takes to be creative all the time. Even when I'm not being creative for clients, I'm being creative for myself. It takes a lot of energy. And sometimes you need to kind of refill the tank by taking time off. So what I like to do is every single year when I buy my brand new Filofax inserts, and if you didn't know, I'm a huge Filofax person. There's a ton of videos on this channel for Filofax, tons of TikTok videos. Love my Filofax. Every year when I get my new packet of inserts, I go through and find the year overview page that comes free with your inserts and it's kind of got the every month kind of laid out in a neat little block of like dates and I will go through and every three months I will choose a week and highlight that and block it out and that will be my holiday and I will take three holidays throughout the year non-negotiable like school holiday you need to have that time off be strict about it. Don't allow yourself to get round it by being like, oh, well, the revenue's looking a bit down. But, like, you can make it up later. Don't worry about it. You need holiday. Take holiday. And you can step away without the world ending, by the way. I've done a video on it. It's a little bit old by this point. Info's all still good. I'll link it below. And the final point is to switch off and make sure that you are getting good work-life balance. So what I personally have done is removed all notifications from my phone. I do still have emails on my phone, but I do not check them outside of nine to five. And I don't look at them over weekends. If a client emails me, I will not respond. I have a little line in my email footer that basically says you can expect to reply within 24 hours between Monday to Friday, nine to five, just to kind of help manage the expectation. I do not give clients my phone number and I don't allow them to WhatsApp me at all 
WhatsApp is for my personal life. I don't want to be looking at that and seeing a client's name popping up. I don't want to have to kind of think, oh, I've got a notification on my phone. I really hope it's not from that client because WhatsApp is for me. That's private, that's personal, it's for me. I keep a distinct line between my professional and personal life and I make sure that I'm not allowing my work to encroach on non-working hours. I work strictly nine to five, that is it. You cannot contact me at weekends, those are for me. And that really helps me kind of maintain that work-life balance because let's be real, as freelancers, we are the business. I'm currently in my home. My home is also my office. That means that even when I leave work, technically, I'm still in my fucking office. My phone is also my office. Whenever I'm on my phone, talking to a friend, or scrolling through social media, or shopping for a really expensive candle that I absolutely cannot afford but became obsessed with after smelling once in a department store. That's my time. I don't want you coming in here, that's for me. Technically, I'm still at work. Because my phone is my work, but my phone is also my personal life, and my home is my work, but it's also my personal life. So anything I can do to create those divides between work and home, I absolutely will do. I dedicate a specific area of the house to work. When I'm not in that area, I'm not at work. Shut the door, I'm not in the office. So anything you can do to create that divide and stop them melding into one another will really help your mental health, I think. And so that's it. Those are my biggest tips for freelance self-care. And mostly they are all about making sure you know exactly what you're worth, what your personal boundaries are, and making sure that you are looking after yourself because I can't be there all the time. Thank you for watching. I'll be back here, same time, same place, in two weeks for more Kiss My A's. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and don't forget to come find me on TikTok. I'm over there having a right laugh and if you're not over there having a laugh with me, well then what the fuck are you doing? Take care and peace out.